<laughs> Sarah? Here. Stephanie? Here. John? Here. Travis? Here. Nathan? Here. All right. Uh, item two, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. <laughs> item three, consent agenda. I'm going to make a motion to approve the consent agenda with one change. We have um, some discussion on some ducks at 230 East Market on here twice. So I'm going to ask to remove item 6A and just leave the discussion for 5A. All right. We have a motion to approve with the 6A um, change. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, uh, item four, public input. This is the time and place for discussion items not already on the agenda with a time limit of three minutes each. Would anybody like to say anything? Please state your name. Joe Miller. Hi, Joe. I sent an email asking about the separation package yep. for Connie. Yep. And it said to, uh, to look at Exhibit A. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. Uh, we did send that to you today. I got notice last night yeah, that, I said that, that I was delinquent. I sent it today. Okay. But uh, I apologize for how late that, that was. But um, you should be able to review that in your email. Okay. Do you have any questions about it? or? Uh, I was just curious what we were doing, I guess. so. I, that's public knowledge, so I don't know why we can't discuss it. I don't right. that yep. separation it's, agreement is. Um, and I, you guys stay with me so that if I miss something, um, Connie is working through the month, Connie's retiring. So she's yeah. going to work through the month of July full time. And then she is going to work August, September, and October up to 20 hours per week. Right. Um, we will still be paying her and we will still be paying her benefits during that time. And that is, Connie did the job of two people. One was the administrator and one was the clerk. We have an administrator <clears throat> that came on with experience, so we're good there, but we do not have a clerk with experience. And we had four applicants for the clerk, and only one of them even had any like city experience. So that is basically what she will be spending the bulk of those that time doing, is training that new clerk. In addition to that, she just got done doing our audit, and there's a bunch of year-end reports and things like that that have to be filed before December. So that's what she's spending the rest of her time doing okay. um, during that. And then every employee who leaves gets their, whether they retire, resign, get fired, whatever, they get any vacation that they have, any personal time that they have, and any comp time that they have. So she got all of that. When you retire per our union contract, you get your sick time. So she got that. Did I miss anything? I think that Did covers it, it. yeah. You, you, the commitment, uh, the commitment to do some more work and help in um, get Jeff and uh, um, our future uh, clerk up to speed is um, brings a lot of value to that. So I think too, one thing that's really important for the town to recognize is that Connie is leaving with a lot of valuable information. So we need to be able to call on her in the future, especially like for the complex and things like that. Um, I mean, she, she got over a million dollars worth of grants for the city in the time that she was here. And most recently, you're going to see us later tonight do a $5.2 million bond. She came to us and asked us to do that bond because the interest rates were so low. And we did that bond, and we saved $160,000 in interest by doing that bond that way. And that bond is for what? That bond was refinancing $100,000 that we already had out there in a bond. And then it's for the complex and... Water, water, water main, main project. Water main project. Um, it's, it, and, but it, yeah, oh, wow. it also refinanced some existing debt and saved us over what, $160,000? We thought we were going to save like 100000 because we thought we were going to get like a 2.2% rate. But we've never been rated as a city. Um, and so they did that this year. And this was the first time we've ever really been eligible for it. And because we have so much... I don't know if you know, but when Connie came on here, we the city was in trouble. And what she has turned things around dramatically, and the city got the best possible rating that it could get because of all the financial stuff and because of the money that the cash that we have on hand. So the audit they're doing now is this like a normal audit? Yep, every yeah, year. Typical annual audit. Yep, every year we have an audit. Um, and so that's happening now. And then it's a, it's an independent third party 
group, so they have nothing to do with the city or... State or... The, they're private. They're private, yeah. They're yeah. independent. The state requires it that you usually contract with a private uh, auditing firm. Okay. I do have another question. You guys mentioned about the city employees turning it over to the city administrator. Who is over them now? Before that? It depends. Well, who are you specifically? Now. What specifically are you talking about? What employees specifically? Who, who do they answer to if you're going to turn it over to the city administrator who was doing it before that? Well, it's different for every employee. No, we're, we're just actually liaisons. So but if the police department has an issue and or Doug, the fire department has an issue, they come to their liaison. Yeah. So depending on who the employee is, that answer is different for every employee. So like the three maintenance guys, so Chris Coleman, Chris Rodman, um, Nate um, Slayton, Slayton, I want you want to say Nate Smith, um, and Drayton, the park and rec director, they report to Travis Bagby. And then Travis reports to the administrator. The police department, the officers always reported to Rick, and Rick reported to the mayor. The um, clerk, fire chief. the clerk, clerk yep. and the, well, the fire chief, yeah. The clerk and the fire chief report to the city administrator. So going forward, because right now we don't have a police chief, they will be reporting to the administrator instead of the mayor. We do, we have two officers, yep. Both active? Yes, both active officers, yep. And then we also have, since this has happened, we've had three officers contact us with interest in being part-time officers, and we've hired one, um, which is Brandon Siggins. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. Um, and then obviously we've contra contracted a little more with Mount Vernon. They used to do 10 hours a week for us, and we're upping that time with them. So when you move in the future to turn it over to the city administrator, who's going to overlook all that? Well, that the council. That's always the city council. The, count, the city administrator reports to the council. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the hierarchy. All right. When Doug was mayor, before he took a leave of absence, he wanted the individual departments, and so individual departments would be public works, um, sewer, the library board, the history center, park and rec, the police department, the fire department, there's a whole list of them. Every one of those departments has at least two people on the council that are their liaisons. So he wanted everybody to report to their individual liaisons with questions instead of coming to him. And so that's kind of how it's gone since he's been mayor in January. Anything else? Anything else? All right, moving on. 5A, discussion and possible action regarding hearing on ducks at 230 East Market Street. Or did we move that to six? No, we got rid of six we and moved it left to five. so they don't have okay. to stay. We moved it to 5A. All the yeah, whole way. I got it backwards. Hi, I'm Lee Kibbe. Uh, this is last December. We purchased the church over 230 East Market. Uh, the spring after COVID, uh, I sent my little girl home a whole lot. I bought some ducks with the intention of just having bigger pets and maybe give my wife some eggs. Um, and you know, at the moment we have six, but my intention isn't even to keep all six because we're not breeding them. We have to keep them long enough to figure out what the sex is and then get rid of the excess at that point. Um, so uh, we got about the same time my neighbor got uh, chickens and to the delight of our neighbors, everyone had walked by and always taken interest in saying how wonderful it is to the ducks. We do have signed um, sheets saying that all of our neighbors don't find it to be a nuisance whatsoever. Um, I guess what we're seeking is just a waiver. Um, we don't want you to change any, you know, go out of your way or anything, but if we could just get a waiver so my little girl can have some fat ducks and my wife can have some eggs, I'd really appreciate that. Um. Did you check with the city ordinances before you I, decided to buy ducks? When I found out my neighbors got the chicken and said there was a, uh, some chicken, uh, you know, something you've got to fill out, I got online and looked through for anything on ducks at all. And the only thing I came up with was Marion. You have to have special permission in Marion, Iowa to have ducks. Um, I did a lot of research. Um, even the kind of ducks we have, they're Pekin ducks. They're very, very friendly. Um, they don't fly. Um, I, I did a lot of research before doing this. I didn't just go up half cocked and bring home some ducks one day. Uh, but I, I didn't find anything as far as Lisbon and ducks. 
And it was only recently when I got the letter that I find out that they're classified under livestock and that would be a problem. Yeah, so for our ordinance, um, livestock are not allowed within the city limits and, and ducks are part of the definition of livestock. And the problem with it really is not that I think your ducks are going to cause a problem or anything, and I, maybe they will, maybe they won't, I don't know. But the problem is, first of all, we can't just issue you a waiver and say that you can have ducks because it's against our ordinance. We would have to change our ordinance for one thing to match it. The other thing is, is once we change our ordinance to allow ducks, we're going to run into a problem with other people wanting different kinds of livestock. And the chicken thing was, I don't know if everybody remembers, a huge debate. Um, and I was actually surprised that that got passed, but it did. So, I, I mean, obviously this council is going to vote on it. I am of the mindset that we would not be able, we would not be able to allow your ducks, unfortunately, per the ordinance. It was my understanding that ducks classify as poultry and not livestock. If you look at our ordinance, our definition of livestock does include poultry. Yep. Right there. By my definition, yeah, but it's whatever the ordinance says. Yeah. So per our ordinance, livestock means an animal belonging to the bovine, caprine, equine, ovine, or porcine species, species, ostriches, rays, and emus, farm deer as defined in section 170.1 of the Iowa Code, or poultry. Um, pet. In a different, and this is the whole thing about our animals. Pet means a living dog, cat, or animal normally maintained in a small tank or cage in a near, in or near a residence, including but not limited to rabbit, gerbil, hamster, mouse, parrot, canary, finch, tropical fish, goldfish, snake, turtle, gecko, iguana. So we allow for rabbits as part of our definition of a pet, but we don't allow for poultry as part of our definition of a livestock. Ducks. Not per the code Not as it is right code. now. No. Yeah, the only consideration I have is do ducks make more noise than chickens? I know we don't allow roosters because of their crowing in the morning. How much noise do these ducks make? How about the neighbor chickens are like to come down? I, I think maybe we ought to review the section. Ducks don't make any more of a nuisance than chickens do. Why do we exclude ducks? How you keep them? Is it the same as your neighbor's chickens? They're, they're kept in the pen. They have a, two enclosures they can go into at night or if they're cold. Um, we let them out in the yard once, or, uh, once, two or three times a day, let them exercise because they need more room. Uh, the enclosure is very small uh, because they're and you're preyed on it. From what I understand in my research, uh, eagles can't really dive straight down, so you want something very close. Very small. Um, so yeah, that's I guess that's enclosure. Uh, is your yard fenced? It is not. So when you let them out for their exercise three times a day or whatever, do they wander? Never. Never. They don't even go to our neighbor's yard. It doesn't fence either. Under supervised. Under supervised at all times. My only concern with doing a, a waiver of sorts is, or even allowing, is just the precedence that you're setting. Um, like we said before, it starts this way, and then it, it'll just keep going and going and going until you know we've allowed everything in there. Um, that's my biggest concern. I just don't want to set a precedence for that. Have you thought about getting chickens? <laughs> well, again, the research says if you want eggs, get ducks. Um, and chickens, I mean, that whole thing about pecking and chicken pecking party is quite true. They, they have little nasty tempers at times, so I wanted a very friendly duck for my daughter's pets. I used to work at a place that had a bunch of ducks, and they were not so friendly sometimes, too. But I know I there's know. different kinds. I had ducks chase me when I was a kid ducks. because we had ducks. So I, I didn't. But I don't know what kind of 
ducks my parents had, but they chased me a lot. <laughs> Maybe it was, was payback because I chased them. But, I mean. Well, what do you guys want to do? Well, to, John, to John's point, we could review it, but um, we can't grant you a waiver tonight. Um, we can't change the ordinance inside of, what, six weeks? Yeah. Um, I, and I, I, can I just mention one thing? Um, in in our ordinance, it also says even with chickens, you have to have a permit. So, you know, coming to the city hall and finding out, e even just calling, m maybe would have been the first step to take before you went out and purchased these ducks. Um, because regardless if you have chickens, you still have to have a permit to have them. So. And, and I knew going into the chicken, the chickens had that permit. I think. Very happy to get whatever permit you want for ducks. I mean, I, I guess I don't see much difference between ducks and chickens, um, other than ducks are more friendly and they lay more often and yield more eggs. Well, what do you guys think? Should we try and put in a review? I will review it if you guys. I, want I'll, to I'll review. Yeah, yeah, we can take, review it. I don't think we can take and, any action tonight. We yeah. certainly can't change the ordinance in one night. So. No, we can't even change the ordinance and. In about two months, six weeks, eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't think we want someone to get rid of their pet ducks if we're going to possibly allow them in two months. Well, you'll have to put it on the agenda for the next council meeting and have discussion on it. And if council decides that they want to change it, I mean, obviously, right. he's going to have a pass for the next two weeks. Yeah. I'm, did I'm, you? How did this come to be? Uh, I was a, or somebody reported it to. So me. you got a complaint from yes. a neighbor or something? Okay. Um, I won't do anything while the council's deliberating us, so I'm not yeah. gonna. Yeah. Right. We no. repeat it if you yeah. we'll, yeah. we'll just we'll. Right. Table We're gonna it put it on the next agenda. Next agenda. Do you and want the signed uh, sheets from the neighbors. Sure. I mean, anything that you yeah. have to plead your case. If you have anything, um, research or anything that you want us to look at that you might see that we don't see, you can turn anything into Jeff and he'll make sure that we all get copies of it. Yep. yep. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. Thanks. Okay, 5B, discussion and possible action of goal setting 2021 to 2025. Yeah, this is, uh, I don't know if you saw Pat's, uh, had a memo in there to you, you council and the mm -hmm. mayor as well as a uh, lay of his fee structure. The, just, the date we talked about there was, was August 17th or 18th. There's one, that'd be a Monday or Tuesday in between the two council meetings in, in August. With the backup date, if that didn't work, we were gonna go to the 27th of August. Well, I think we need a full session because I know that in the past, the, the first was always, you know, it's always taken a while. It's been hours. So do you yeah. want to do an two, off week? Just to yeah. uh, didn't you say the seventeenth was an off week? Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do you guys want to do that? I think I'm do you want to just 17th. stick with Monday? Yeah. Monday Since that's has a lot of wind, so it's sometimes you know, he likes he to does talk. like to talk. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that seventeenth will work. Okay. Would you like to start maybe a little earlier than we start a normal council meeting? To yeah. Like it could we do six? Can you do a six o'clock? Yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. Do six. yeah, let's John, do six, six o'clock. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll get back with Pat. And do you need a motion for I can use a motion to go forward, yeah, with the. I make a motion to move forward with Pat Callahan on right. August 17th at 6 p.m. Second. Motion. Do we have a second? Second by Stephanie. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. 5C, discussion of sauerkraut days 2020 and possible approval of parade route. Brandon um, said the route was. Oh, yep. Brandon Brandon's said here. The route he called me today. Um, he uh, uh, has reviewed the, the route with the committee, and um, you made a slight alteration to what was originally submitted, but just to protect the byways of Washington getting in and out of town. Okay, so they're just going to cross me and Jackson. They're going to have staff, and we'll figure out something for the law enforcement presence there as well. So they're just going to cross those roads instead of. Having the parade. Obviously, it's going to come from North Washington, but we'll at least keep Jackson open. The parade will end at the park on South Street, not on Jackson. Okay. So that'll help as well. Okay. Motion to approve the parade route. We got a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second from Sarah. Um, we'll do a roll call for this. Uh, Sarah? 
Aye. Stephanie? Aye. John? Aye. Travis? Aye. Nathan? Aye. All right. Um, moving on to 5D. Discussion of possible action installing culvert adjacent to New Park on West Market Street. So, yeah, right down here, just past where Barbara John used to live, um, the city repaired one side of the road. South side? Yep, from sloughing off, and now the north side's doing the same. Um, our engineering uh, numbers came in around 15. I waited and we talked with Brecky, and they, their number came in at 85. So I would like to move forward with that. Um, that's with the city hall. Eight thousand five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Eight thousand five hundred seventy-eight dollars and eighty-three cents. Yep. Right. That's with the city hall and in dirt. We're taking and we're moving our spoil pile from the cemetery and cleaning that area up and using that to extend the, the edge of the road and then the culvert. Make a motion to approve Brecky um, installing the culvert for. Uh, $8,578.83. And that's just in that one area, right? Yeah. And just the north side. So. Can I say something? Do you guys just deal with Brecky exclusively? Or do you guys have an investment in anybody else? Or how does that work? It we, depends uh, on the project. Yeah. When it's, uh, okay. if it's deemed a maintenance, we have a maintenance contract with Brecky. I mean, I, I'm not trying to right. criticize. I'm just saying, you know, if you have a big relationship with somebody, it works yeah. out. I'm just... So. That's a good question. Sometimes if it's like a bigger project or different, we'll go out for bids and we have to have at least like three of them sure. to pick from. But if it's something like this, it's right. just general maintenance. Right. So the culvert work they're doing is that for the down the bottom. Yeah. 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 All right, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Sarah? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. John? Aye. Travis? Aye. Nathan? Aye. All right. Um, 5E, discussion of possible actions setting public hearing for fiscal year 2021 budget amendment number one for August 10th, 2020. So we want to have the public hearing on Yeah, we just want to, we'll have the, all right. We have the public hearing and then the, the motion. So this is covering mostly because of the big bond, the proceeds from the big bond we just did. And then we did do an adjustment for road use tax down a little bit. And as Connie and I went over what we thought. I can't hear you. Sorry. We went down. We did some reductions for the road use tax in there. And do you uh, want to explain that to them, why, why we're seeing a reduction in road use sure tax. covid we're expecting a hit in covid of about seventy thousand dollars to road use tax for the city so about a quarter of our revenue from the fuel tax we're expecting that's because that to get nobody is less driving. people driving that's what the dot told us to expect yeah. was and judging by the last four months that's about what we're seeing so and our road use fund funds a lot of things other than just funds some salaries for maintenance workers there's other things that come out of that than just road you you know than just road maintenance and stuff like that snow removal yeah so it Among it's a hit for sure hopefully it'll so those are the two big back. things on this uh, on the uh, the, uh, the amendment well i make a motion to set the public hearing for august 10th do i have a second i'll second all right we have a motion and a second uh sarah Aye. Stephanie? Aye. John? Aye. Travis? Aye. Nathan? Aye. Okay, 5F. Discussion of possible action regarding advertising for deputy slash billing clerk position. This is to, um, yeah, this. Yep. So later on, we're going to be hiring Christina as our new clerk. The, right. She's the current utility billing clerk. Yep. Um, and so we need to fill her position now. And yeah. so that's what this will be for. Okay to authorize to advertise this yeah. position. So I'll make a motion to allow Jeff to advertise for the deputy billing clerk position in all the places that we are required to advertise. The local paper and, and the Gazette. Yep. Yeah. And um, how long do you guys want that open, the posting? You want two weeks, four weeks? What? I think we usually do two, two weeks, weeks and then revise, uh, like and once review. those we review yeah. to see how many applicants and then we repost if we need to and right. we I know did that's what we did with and we'll, we'll another position re review on the 10th we did actually let the sun know that we were going to need a spot for this so they'll still be able to get it in this week 
because um, we let them know ahead of time that we were going to need that. So. All righty, we have a motion. I will second. Um, Travis. Aye. John. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. Sarah. Aye. Nathan. Aye. Oh God, yes. No. All right. Always. Thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Um, section six: public hearings, ordinance resolutions. Um, 6B, we're skipping 6A, we removed that. Discussion of possible revisions to Chapter 21-City Administrator. This is the uh, job description right. for, um, um, for your new position right. because we had a combined uh, administrator slash clerk and Connie, we have right. an administrator only with you. Um, I think we talked about this, there would be um, there's actually no require, no need to change the code, correct? No, and, and I was just pointing out that you already have the language in there which allows, to me, to see the, oversee the other departments. All department heads report to the city administrator, including the clerk. Mm -hmm. So that pretty much takes care of that, I think. So do we want to actually change the language? Well, I do a little okay? bit because if you look at, well, I'm going to ask you guys, 2103, duties generally. No, item number three says day-to-day -day coordination of daily activities of the city's employees and departments except the police department. Authority to direct employees as to the time and manner of carrying out work including coordination of efforts between departments. I think he does need to be able to help with the day-to-day -day with the police department while we're without a chief. And then the other part, number seven there, is um, hire and terminate employees excluding the clerk and the chief of police in accordance with the policies established by the council after consultation with appropriate department heads and city council. I'm not sure. I think you probably want to take out the city clerk and the police chief from that potentially because you can't do it without council anyway, mm -hmm. but we're really limiting them with those two in there. So whatever you guys want, but those were the two that I think need to change. So number seven, that's what you're... You want to just take out the clerk and the police chief? On uh, number three, want I to want that? to... I'm talking number seven. Oh, number seven, I want to take those two out. There should be no exclusions. Because he can't, he or she, you know, if Jeff's not in this position, whatever, whoever is, they can't do anything without counsel anyway. Right. So I don't know why we would have any exclusions in there, especially if he's going to be doing the day-to-day -day operations for those departments as so well. So excluding city clerk and chief of police, you want that? removed but the rest of the verbiage the same yeah and then number three he would do the day-to-day -day coordination of the police department so he would coordinate with them right now mm -hmm. so just take out except the police department mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. now let me ask though if we go through and we get a chief of police are we going to have to change these again no I don't I don't no, see because how that he, that would he be can't a good terminate. Idea. He can't terminate the chief of police or the city clerk. And I thought we had decided the, that we kind of, we kind of wanted even if there was a police chief somewhere down the line, we kind of do still want them to work with the city administrator so that everybody's on the same page and we have a checks and balance. Isn't the mayor supposed to do that? I'm just asking. So it's been both ways. Um, in the past, it, it's honestly ironic. Um, I know that you probably know that my husband was mayor at one time and we owned a bar when he was mayor. So when he became mayor, they changed it so that the police chief answered to the city administrator because it was a conflict of interest to have a bar owner and the chief. And we have that same situation or we had that same situation when Doug was mayor and Rick was chief. Um, obviously Doug's a bar owner. So I think you just eliminate any conflicts that way of anything that could be, you know. And the, the real reason that this is happening is because you have a part-time mayor and a part-time council up here. So none of us really have time to be spending as much time as we have been. And he's here every single day doing all the day-to-day -day stuff. He knows everything, the budget inside and out, or he will. So it just makes more sense for him to be the one making those decisions and those calls. Because what happens to us is somebody calls us and goes, oh, hey, this is happening, and then we're like, okay, why is it happening? And then they're like, well, I don't know, this person said that, and this person did that, and that person did this, and then we have to spend two hours trying to decipher who actually did do what, and then make a decision. And so it's just, 
I think better. It's better service for everybody if it's under someone who's engaged. Here every day. Every day and here every day. Um, so those would be I my agree, I agree. Were those the only two places? Um, yeah, I think so. Now, is there anything in here that combined the two duties of the clerk and the administrator? Because that's, you know, what was happening before was both things were being done by one person. Yeah, so when we get Christina up to par where she's all on board and ready to go with the clerk position on her own and full in, we'll leave it. But right now, since Connie's still technically a city administrator and she'll be doing some of the clerk stuff, I don't think we change that until after Connie's gone. Okay. So I'll bring this back for first reading with taking out those two passages. Yes, next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Do we have to have a public hearing on it first? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. you'll have to have public, a public hearing on first reading would be first August, reading. August, August 10th. 10th. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So you probably need a motion for that. Uh, yes. Because you be want good. to have a public hearing. Okay, so I'll make a motion to have the public hearing and the first reading on that night. I don't, I know you got to put it on there to um, waive, but I don't ever, I never want to waive the well, second and third reading. No I know it'll be too. council decision, but I just think that that's always a bad yeah. practice. But I know it has to be on the agenda. Well, but I mean, yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to put it on the agenda, but, but we, and we don't have to approve the waiving of any readings, and I don't like to. No, you don't have to. All right, so I need a motion, uh, or I have a motion. Um, do we have a second for the revisions as spelled out by Stephanie? Second. John seconds. All right, roll call. Sarah? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. John? Aye. Travis? Aye. Nathan? Aye. Thanks. We'll have that ready for the next meeting then, Jeff. Yep. All right, 6C. Discussion and possible action regarding resolution 39-2020, authorizing and approving a certain loan agreement providing for the issuance of $5.25 million general obligation corporate purpose bonds, series 2020, and providing for the levy of taxes to pay the same. The levy of taxes, are we, um, we, we don't so, have to raise taxes for right. this. Right, this just the says it's a general obligation bond, right. and that what that means in effect is that the full faith and credit of the city is per doesn't mean it doesn't mean you have to use property taxes for it right it just means that that is a possibility and so when you do these kinds of things for geo you have to that's part of the verbiage and we're not planning to use property taxes at this moment in time for right. any of that so. right part of it's a refunding mon and then yeah but water revenues and other things can go towards it too any other discussion? No, to approve. All right, I have a motion to approve the um, uh, authorization and approval of the loan agreement. Do I have a second? Second. I have, I have a motion and I have a second. John? Aye. Travis? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Nathan? Aye. All right. Five, or sorry, 6D, discussion and possible action regarding resolution 40-2020, approving plat of survey number 2437, splitting of lot 52, Novak Estates, fifth edition. This was in front of PNZ. Yeah, this was approved by PNZ on July 16th. It's just a simple. Uh, and it carried, right? Yeah, it, it carried approved. unanimous. It's unanimous. It's just okay. a division of a duplex. It's a duplex or, lot. Duplex lots. Lot. They're just splitting it in two. Okay. Up there. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Aye, second. We have a motion, we have a second. Travis? Aye. John? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Nathan? Aye. All right, 6E, discussion and possible action regarding resolution 41-2020, updating employee handbook. So we think it's outdated. It's probably time to look at it. Um, not just the employee handbook. I mean, I know that's what's on the agenda right now, but I know that Sarah's been working on our policies and procedures, and it just hasn't been looked at in several years, and it's just time to take a peek and see if there's anything in there that's outdated, or um, at some point we'll work on the policies and procedures too, but we'll get started with the employee handbook. Um, I, th I think this is something that, well, 
maybe not the goal setting, but we talked about having those work sessions and stuff like that. In my head, this would be something that we would do during, you know, we would just pick parts of it and go. Each session, we would just pick parts and do. And we talked about doing that at the end of, of council meetings, you know, so that we didn't have any expense of paying council to be at special meetings. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, for the next several council meetings, we could just pick a part of the handbook and see, you know, if everybody wanted to just review it. I think you all have a copy of it. It was sent to you. Um, yeah. Just review it and see what you don't like or what you think is outdated. Well, we have a resolution in front of us for uh, changes to the vacation uh, schedule in our Well, package. that's yep. because of the union contract. Union contract. Okay, so that's Correct. just just the details of the union contract. The we're just matching. We're just changing the employee right. handbook to match the union contract. But there's okay. a lot of other things in there that probably need to be looked at. I completely so we agree. Should do then. So we want to st when do we want to start doing that? Yeah, to the end of that discussion, when do we want to start working on that? Once at the end of every council meeting until we're done? Or you guys want to do it like yeah, I Well, I is mean, there I any chance that that goal session meeting could, could we could start talking about it then After on the 17th like that. do half and half or something or like to spend a half an hour just kind I of mean, getting a game can. plan? I suspect it'll run into a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a good idea better idea I me mean, personally, if we took two policies, let's say per me per meeting, and hacked away at them, I like that. Maybe what we okay. should do is each of us review the employee handbook and see what you read that sticks out to you as like this is probably outdated or a problem, and then we could just take turns bringing that to council at the end of a meeting for discussion. Would you guys want to do that? I think that's agreeable. Yeah, I, you like yeah, that? That's fine. We'll start with the employee handbook and then go to policies and procedures. Is the handbook usual on like the city side or for the public? Or it is. Or? It is um, an open document. Like you can see it. It's okay. it's open to the public. I don't know if it's on the I website. Don't know if it's no. on the website. I've never looked at it. Yeah. It's no. No. I don't know that that's something that probably that. is out there usually since it's an so employee handbook. The handbook. I would assume it would be on the agenda or not. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. So it has to be. So Absolutely. Uh, that there should be a little public input on it. And it. you, I don't know if you care about the employee handbook as much as you do the policies and procedures maybe. Security. Two different books. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at it for on the agendas. Well, some of those things are in the policies I think belong in the handbook. Yeah. Yes. And more employee yes, stuff. I agree. That, because really the handbook should be internal issue, internal matters, mm -hmm. and the policies are really external. Mm -hmm. Do you want to explain the vacation thing? Do you have it in your head right now? Uh, well, we did with the vacation is we allowed the newer employees to accrue that second week sooner so they could actually take time off. Um, we have what, two employees that would have had to wait another year to get two weeks of vacation. So so our old policy, you got one week of vacation. So first of all, our employees don't get any vacation until a whole year after they've been here, which I think is crazy. And I would be in favor of changing that. But anyways, um, so after the first year, you would get one week. And then you would have to wait until you were at five years to get the second week. I believe that's what it was. I can't remember exactly. I just know now you get it after the second year. Now you get it after the second year. Um, if we If this gets approved tonight. So I'll make a motion to update the handbook to match the union contract. I'll What's second. What's the employee training authorization? Oh, that we discussed at the last meeting. So that's like, um, let's say that one of the maintenance guys goes and gets their water certification. They get a raise for that certification. Yeah, it's It was in there before and somehow yeah. it got taken out and it's always just been given to them, but it needs to be in there. It should have never been taken out. And this is the first time I've ever done the union contract negotiation, so I didn't know that it had ever come out. And that also follows up with they've got to give you up to four years of service. Otherwise, they have to prorate that class back to you, to the city. Okay. Cost and I think that that's standard procedure, like even in the fire department, right, Brandon? If we pay for somebody to go get their EMS or medical, whatever, and they leave, they have to pay us back for that class. Yeah. All right, well, we have a motion to approve the uh, updates uh, spelled out in the employee handbook. Do I have a second? I'll second. Sarah seconds. Um, Sarah? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. John? Aye. Travis? Aye. Nathan? Aye. 
And as far as update, um, reviewing the rest of the book, shall we start next meeting? I mean, whenever you have a chance to look at it, if should you find something, just bring it. Okay. And we can just cover it in the normal reports section of our agenda, or should we have a... If you want to tell me beforehand, I'll make copies of the two sections for the packet. I'd rather have it in the agenda spelled out so. what we're looking at. So just tell me beforehand and I'll get okay. it ready. Okay. Spelled out what we're looking at or just that we're looking well, at the employee to, handbook? To Joe's point, if, if the citizens want to be present to have input, uh, in addition to our review. Well, I was just going to say he could just standard put it on the end of every agenda. And then if somebody had something, we can discuss it. And if nobody has anything, we don't discuss it. I like yep. that plan. For yep. that That's fine, too. Okay. All right. Let's do that then. Right. Starting. I won't have now. anything by the next council meeting. I need a little break. <laughs> I understand why. Um, okay. We'll do that. Um, all right. 6F. Discussion of possible action regarding resolution 42-2020, hiring city clerk. So again, Connie did the job of two people. She's leaving, retiring. Jeff took the administrator job, so now we need a clerk. And so we had interviews. We had four people that applied for the position. We interviewed all four of them. Um, one person had bank reconciliation experience, but that was it. Nobody had any city government. Nobody had any agenda. I mean, nothing. Christina does part of the clerk job right now um, in her billing job. So she does like accounts payable, accounts receivable, stuff like that. She does some of that payroll which is a big one. So we did offer the job to Christina and um, she accepted it pending council approval. She will start at $23 an hour and that's for six months that she's on probation and then at the end of the six months we would um, review her performance and then possibly bump her up to $24 an hour, which is what, um, just so you guys know, what we did was we researched all the towns like around us that were the same size, same whatever. We've actually been looking at that for all of our city jobs um, to kind of see if we're on par with what other, we're actually a little low compared to all of our counterparts. Um, so we are trying to work to get everybody, you know, where they should be. But um, so that's where that salary came from. And we did budget for that last year, so it is in the budget. Uh, my question would be, if she didn't quite have the credentials, so are we sending her somewhere to train her for the credentials? Or are we well, that's what Connie's here for. Connie. Yeah, <laughs> Connie will be helping her, but she's also, Christine has been also taking a lot of classes okay. to, to be able to be able to do this position as well. So Christina so. is our clerk, and so what happens is in April and October of every year, her and Connie do a conference, and she goes one track for the utility billing, and Connie goes another track for the financials. So the clerk really needs to be on that financial track. So Christina actually on her own time, because she knew that she was going to be applying for this job and knew it was here, she actually took some accounting courses and I think she just finished those last week. That was something she did on her own, not through the city, um, but she took the initiative to do that on her own. And then that's why Connie's here for the next few months to kind of train her. But with all of our employees, I think it's this council's mindset. Um, who knows what future councils will think. But we are encouraging all of our employees to take any classes that they want that will help them with their jobs um, to better them in those positions. Because uh, there's a lot of stuff out there available for them, and right. nobody really takes advantage of that it right now. Outside yeah. Influence would be okay. She'll go, uh, what's that one? League? Iowa League of Cities. Yeah, so they're doing that. It's virtual. A lot of stuff's virtual this year. The sure. Iowa, Municipal, Iowa Municipal Finance Officers Association, she gets a lot of support through that, too. And they, they have trainings like at Des Moines, like a couple times a year, and they bring people in. And she's also on the listserv for city clerks, so they call it for the clerk net. So she has the resources of all the experienced clerks in Iowa to ask help to and she needs it and stuff. Yeah, the sure. benefit to Christina is she has been here for eight years, but also she's um, on the city council in Bennett. She lives in actually Bennett, and she's on the city council there, so she's got some of that background. Um, I think she'll be a really good fit. Yeah, she's been an asset to our city for a long time. So I'm making a motion to hire her with what I quoted, the $23 an hour with a six-month you know, period, then at that time, warranting performance, she would get bumped up to 24. All righty, we have a motion. I will second. Oh, okay. <laughs> All righty, John. Aye. Travis. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. Sarah. Aye. And Nathan, aye. All right. 
Uh, agenda item seven, correspondence. Anything? No correspondence. Nothing? Nope. Okay. Uh, eight, reports. City engineer's report. Long time no see. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, I was here a couple of times. I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we don't blame you. Uh, a few things to report on. On August 17th, the same day that you set up your goal settings, I'll be meeting with the DOT. They asked that we conduct an online meeting with them to go over the report that we did for Highway 30. Okay. Some questions. They want to go through the evaluation we did on the structures. And uh, hopefully we'll get some uh, feedback from them possibly reach an agreement at that point, be able to get back to you possibly that same day for your goal seven days. So, Perfect. Uh, on the EC Cog uh, CDBG grant, um, John Bruce is supposed to be the person that we're dealing with. He's out until August 11th. We've been trying to get something set up to get that grant application started. I know there was a conference call earlier. Um, Tom Bruce from EC Cog has been sitting in the place, but Hopefully, uh, when John gets back, I'll uh, sit down with him and get started on that grant application. We do have some time before that's due because we have to get on the uh, SRF IUP list, which is something we applied for earlier, but that doesn't happen until September. So between now and September, we'll be working with them to get the CBG application, which is up to $500,000 grant towards the water system. So that would be wonderful. That is in the works. Uh, also, we've been working on the well siting study, which was previously approved at Council for Engineering. And uh, we'll continue to work with DNR on that. We've submitted some exhibits to them, and they have come to a site survey where they review separation distances to make sure that we don't encroach on any of the state mandated separation requirements. And then the uh, last thing I have to report on is we have been working with Travis, the uh, wastewater system has a NPDES permit requirement. And as part of that renewal, they've asked us this uh, pre-treatment agreement with Lloyd's table to update the uh, baseline monitoring report and uh, work with Lloyd's to get all the information necessary to incorporate into our permit. And we just completed that this week. So okay. That's what I have. Does anybody have any questions for me? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. All right, 8B, Public Works Director's Report. Uh, Dave got most of it. Uh, the only other thing I've done, you know, the only other thing I've done. First, I want to thank the guys for covering for me while I was gone. Um, they, uh, they did a heck of a job stepping up when, when I wasn't there. Um, I have met with Larson and I've done a walkthrough on some of the concrete damage that they've done during construction for the school project. Um, it's, I know a lot of people are going to wonder why we couldn't get everything replaced and even though it's, it doesn't look right, it doesn't affect the actual operation of the curb or that. So there's going to be some marks where they left some, some marks in it, but we can't get them to fix it because it's, I mean, it's deemed just aesthetics. It's not function. Um, but there is a, there's quite a bit of curb line they are going to have to replace and there's a uh, sidewalk intersection that Dave and I have to look at tomorrow to go over with that too. So if you get any, any feedback from the school or that, that's I'll gladly walk them through through everything. Everything's been painted over there in green, so they know what what we're looking at. So they won't replace for aesthetic damage. It's it's no different oh, than than a normal semi driving through there and scuffing it, or you you hop. Oh, it okay, yeah. like so rubber like your scuffing. tires, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was that it for you, Travis? Mm -hmm. I have All a question. Right. Um, we had, after our last council meeting, um, something happened out at the water treatment facility. Mm -hmm. And now, am I understanding this correctly, that somebody took several boxes of soap and poured it into our water plant? There was... Sewer plant. Our sewer plant. There sorry. was an abundance of, of soap down our sewer system. Did we get that fixed? Yes. And we still don't know... No. Anything how, about who or when. how or what or when or no. So, do you have an estimate as to how much that cost us to that take care of? Question. We probably, I mean, manpower. We probably lost a week's worth of three guys. And money-wise, no way to really judge it. Did we? We had to replace yeah. the enzymes, right? Yeah. Well, we had a rotor rooter in there, and then a lot of it is whenever a plant gets upset. Um, we have digesters that hold good bugs in it. 
So basically what we do is we shut the upset part down. We still do our normal treating process. It's always done. Our testing, everything else is getting done. But we just start feeding in good bugs again. So basically we have a super clean sewer plant for a week and a half. So I guess my point to bringing that up is um, it is possible, or we think, maybe that somebody intentionally put soap in the sewer plant. Um, so if anybody knows or hears anything about that, any information would be appreciated because that is your taxpayer dollars that went to fix that and clean it and get it back to where it needed to be. And that you can also call Crime Stoppers or text Crime Stoppers to be anonymous and possibly yep. get a reward. Was there not cameras there? There are not cameras out there. You can dump it in your basement. Oh, go in, go yeah. out there and dump it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it wasn't. It wasn't out there. We saw it throughout the sewer line, so I can't. Okay. You can't pinpoint where it was. So, it was just. Yeah, it's so. It looked just like somebody had a big frosty beer mug out there. There was just nice clean bubbles coming. <laughs> it was a lot of soap. It wasn't it was just. A, it wasn't, a, lot of it wasn't soap, just yeah. a. It was a lot yeah, of soap. It overflowed. <laughs> the, yeah. All right, thank you, Travis. Um, 8C, Police Chief's Report. Amy, do you have anything for reporting? Or? Uh, I don't. Okay. All right. Nothing to report. We're, um, we have uh, Brandon Sagan's covering uh, some of our, um, doing some patrolling in town uh, in lieu of um, Rick Scott. Um, we've also, as Stephanie already mentioned earlier, we've got Mount Vernon uh, increasing their patrols as well. So. Um, but yeah, nothing else to report other than that. Uh, all right, 8F, uh, or I'm sorry, 8D, Fire Chief's Report. Anything on that front? No. No. Uh, 8E, City Administrator's Report. Jeff, you got anything? A couple things. Um, I, of note, uh, we had a conference call, of, sorry, a Zoom meeting with uh, EC Cog about the comp plan. Mm -hmm. So, kind of excited. EC Cog is revamped, it's like some of their processes and stuff. So, we're going to be their first person doing a plan under their new direction. So, oh. which I'm glad to hear that. I, hopefully, I think it'll be better, and we'll get a better product out of it. So, kind of excited about that, and we'll be hit, kicking that off pretty soon here. Um, also, of note, Lisbon has a 75.8 percent census replay census sorry reply rate so the city's done a really good job where that's eight points above the state average oh wow wow so the city's job, done a good, good job and and we need that money because and, of the yeah or we need those reports because the census dictates funding and stuff like that every that person that we can count is another hundred and some per capita hundred and like forty dollars per capita to us per year in roadies tax so I would and you say, can go online and do it it literally takes like yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Just to encourage people that have not done it yet to please. It is please super do fast it. and super easy. So please so. do your census if you uh, haven't yet. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Okay. 8F Mayor's Report. Um, I don't really have anything to report. I've been spending a lot of time with um, Stephanie and Jeff and Christina um, just picking up the pieces, um, learning this mayor job. And um, um, you know, thank you to Brandon and Stephanie for all the you know help that they've given me. Jeff, you as well. Um, I'll um, keep evolving in that and um, you know staying involved and being on top of uh, the things that the city cares about. Um, I think that's we have a question in the audience. Uh, I got something. Sure. About the back of my shop alleyway. Is that something I just probably should get a request for the next council meeting to discuss? I probably. Um, well, you could have brought it up during public input, but what is it? What do you got? Well, it, I've got probably an inch and a half. Well, I've sent up the county about it a couple times. Okay. And the alleyway is just it's too high. So there's actually an inch and a half between the top of the footing of my overhead door and the back of my shop. And between that, on grade height, to the alley. Um, I mean, I've sent up the county about it before. So it, it's the water's running in the back door of my shop. Um, I've got a few videos of it. Um, so Connie just said, well, we've just got two at base. Well, it, it, there's just an abundance of water back there. there and I'm not trying to complain here. I mean, you guys have got all kinds of stuff going on. But um, there was a few times we the alley didn't get plowed this last winter. So then, of course, when I cleaned the back 
drive in my shop, it was just a big pond, and then of course the mill ran back into my shop. Oh, so I didn't know, and it's like I don't have anything that's really material that's damaged in the back or anything, but um, really it's something I'd like to see. Are you familiar with it at all? Or some regrading that back alley. I know we just keep putting chip and dip on it, but that's just going to keep adding to it, and I know it gets a lot of traffic back. Yeah, there. that's only going to make it worse. And Can you take a peek at it? So yeah. can you put that on the agenda, the next council agenda, and have, we'll have Travis go over and take a peek at it, and then come back with like what he thinks maybe. Or does Dave need to look at it too? What'd you say, Travis? I said the infrastructure downtown's been horrible since Price 72. At least, it seems like we always find other things to spend money on, we don't address our infrastructure. And our, to promote businesses to come downtown, and buy these buildings, but, you know, I had to do that. I was in a bad spot when I bought mine, but I probably never thought it. Yeah. Knowing what I know now. Did we address your drainage issues, though? I think, we, I think we did. It's getting there. It's getting there. Okay. Unless we can either chip the or pay will help a lot. But no, I mean, everything we can do will help. But, you know, I just sometimes feel that, you know, we're investing in parts and these other things, but yet we're not investing in infrastructure. And we have buildings out down there flooding and these poor business people, you know, I've all right spent their 50 years and them and them guys across the street and doing the same thing I deal with, you know, my side of the street. So it just, uh, you know, I haven't heard anything from this. I think I the, either, and this is what yeah. needs to happen. They need to come and talk to us about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, well, well I, they, I mean, they, I haven't they, heard anything. Uh, yeah, I'm new. I'm so, just saying, I mean, right, right. For 40 years, you know, sure. Right. So, Travis, I've been on the council for two and a half years, right. and nobody's come in that two and a half I years. Know, but let's put it on there and let's talk about it. They've probably been pushed away yeah, by other tired. councils. Yeah. yeah. You just get tired of it. Complain. You know, I okay. Honestly, that's just what I do. I mean, so, do you uh, want to be on the agenda? I'll be more than happy Travis. to go talk to Albright. So I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll go talk to him and <laughs> let them know. She'll appreciate you know. that. Travis, do you want to be on the next agenda too, or you don't have an issue right now? Uh, no, I, I just was curious He's, because my alley's get full of weeds and everything else. I was walking down the other day and feel weeds everywhere. I'm just like, I mean, I can't maintenance. I would, but you know, sure. it's help for me. Um, but I don't know what, I mean, just for me, it's the look of downtown and things. I mean, I'm trying to, you know, I put lights down alley and I paid for my own bill to light it up when people walk down and each one turns on and I'm just trying to make things look nicer and eventually, I, and thank you for the grant, it's going to help me finally finish off the back of my building and clean everything up, hopefully be nice, but I don't know if people realize how much I get used, it gets used, all the alleys do, and especially that walking alley with me, and it just, to me, it's an embarrassment. And, and to me, it's a reflection of your community or your town. And I would, you know, I try to go out there and pull some weeds or this and that, but hell, you can't see it's not the easiest thing to keep, you know, things looking the best I can. But, you know, uh, it's getting better. You know, it's better what we had. But if it could get finished off, you know, you chip and seal it or do something where you can be maintenance easier and cleaner, um, then just sure, I think. Make your downtown a little better. I think we're moving in the directions for sure. I wish I get morning so I could do something. <laughs> right. No, I, I certainly, I, I am all about something looking nice. Right. What? I mean, we were ownerships of this town, right. so well, that, the whole town needs to look nice, I not just the downtown, but right, right. everywhere needs to look nice. Well, that's your scene. What upsets me is you start to see. Like you go to Walmart and these places, and I sit in the car with my mom. She's like, just there's, there's trash everywhere. And it's just like nobody has any pride anymore in their community or their their nation or anything. It's sad to me. That, mm -hmm. you know. So I agree with you that we should look at this stuff and see if there's issues. But keep in mind, for us sitting up here. It's really, really hard because no, 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 I, here's I, what's happening. You've got our head of our maintenance department telling us that they're a week behind because right. three guys had to go clean out suds right. from somebody putting soap. <laughs> so, I mean, and then you have people saying, well, we don't need this employee. We don't need that employee. But what people don't know is that these employees, we probably do, but every time we do it, all we get is a bunch of backlash. So it's really hard for us to say, let's go spend the money to chip and dip alleys right. because we're going to have 10 people in here going, why are you paying money to chip and dip an alley when we have this problem going on? Right. And so it's it's those a nonstop balance up here for us. Those people don't, you know, those people don't live 
in those places. And no, they, they don't. Guarantee they be complaining. No, they don't. Just but the city, when it took over and bought Wilson's property, they found out that it gets two feet of water in the basement when it rains. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they wonder why Old Man Wilson complained for forty years. I still don't think people realize, I mean, we just got the Mackinmill property, which takes about one day a week to maintain right. fully. That property itself takes yeah. one day a week sure. to keep up with and maintain. People don't realize it. It's great that you guys are all here and kind of getting involved and listening to what's going on because I think you'll have a different appreciation for what the city actually does and doesn't do. Um, because there's a lot going on that you guys don't know about or even see. Like, you're talking about what you see at your location. Well, there's 2,000 people in this town that see it at their own locations, right. too, and everybody's got their own wish list. Well, so we just have to prioritize. Happens. Well, lately, we don't really make anybody happy. But hey, <laughs> we're giving it a shot, and we'll get it right sooner or later. <laughs> we'll figure it out one way or another. We'll figure it out. And Travis? I appreciate your feedback. But we can't fix sure. it if we don't know about it. So I do appreciate you guys coming in here and talking about it because this is the first time I've heard about either one of those yeah. since I've been here. Well, you know, that, you know, I've had a goal for a while trying to eventually get something and bring some things downtown. You know, our downtown is dead for quite a while now. So well, eventually we'll end up like, three you know, well, Mechanicsville or Stanwood or something where we have no downtown if we don't That's invest in I'm it. Saying. We're cut off now. Yep. So, yeah. You know, yep. No exit. And that ha we've yep. discussed that several times in. And Sarah, you're gonna feel it, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. And anybody else that has a business, and I'm I'm wanting to start some ninety foot traffic. Art don't sell online. <laughs> you know, right. People need to come meet me and see what I do and get my story and things to help do that. And I the only way I can do that is to create foot traffic or have events and do yep. some things. But so it I don't happen overnight for me. I don't know if you knew, but Travis Jubeck has been very vocal about this, um, you know, that we cannot be stagnant. We have to do something now that we've been bypassed right. to keep ourselves relevant. Exactly. And there was talks about getting a committee together um, to try to come up with different plans and ideas for mm -hmm. our town and stuff like that. And Travis, you had a lot of really good ideas and a lot of, I mean, well, you I were kind I, of spearheading that. Yeah, I've been talking with the uh, guy with three tracks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am the best looking one. Anyway, uh, so, uh, hey, it comes come from the blind. I looked in the mirror. Today. <laughs> I looked in the mirror. Uh, no, it, I've talked to Laura about it, and now that um, uh, Casey crawls getting her place going down, yeah, you know, and, and uh, I got. I wish Becky could open her front, but um, and then Mark and Carrie. And, some of us, you know, it's going to take some of us to get involved in, in things and even with Sarah or something, uh, talking and coming up with some of these ideas and get some things moving, but I'm just not ready yet. For me being blind, I mean, everything's twofold, threefold for me, um, so I'm going to need some help with uh, these people, but I have no problem getting involved in trying to do some of these things and get some ideas going, you know. So that's the big thing, though. You you want to talk about doing all of this stuff, this revitalization downtown, and right. and doing all this stuff. But people forget that costs money. It does, you know. And so as soon as you start wanting to spend some money, then of course everybody gets upset because you're spending money for nothing, right. you know. Um, well, one right. of the things that we need to do is we need to get people to come into town, right. you know. And it's one of the things mm -hmm. I was going to bring up tonight too was. We have to work on getting out to that bypass. I know you guys don't like the idea of it, but we got to do it. You know, either annexation, we need to get services out there. We've got to give somebody an opportunity to build something right there because that will bring some traffic into yep. town. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I have Diane Nolan from the Gazette in my back pocket. So anytime I want to do anything, I have to use call. And she, she'll come do an article on me or whatever I want to do, but I'm just not there yet. You mm -hmm. know? And I'm hopefully, you know, Getting, it's going in the right direction, and like I told you back when I got my sighting and things, that this isn't app for me overnight. Just I can't do like I used to, Travis. And you know, mm -hmm. and um, but the thing is, I, I got the Iowa Department line. They're coming tomorrow. And they're gonna. Like, she's looking at trying to help me get some more money to finish my gallery and stuff. And she said there's opportunities there for me that they'll help with fundraising or other things too that I can put on or these things. So I mean, there's there's options for me to be able to take advantage of my disability. You know, but it just it it's not going to happen overnight is the only thing, you know, so. Part of that complex, I mean, that was, you know, one of the, re when the complex is done, which is a ways down the road, but we're going to start with the soccer fields because that's the cheapest, easiest thing to build. Um, but eventually there will be a complex there where people can rent the fields and have tournaments and stuff like that, you know, hoping, I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever First followed. 
It's um, north of Myers Meadow. Mar it's all that property yeah. north of Myers Meadow. Yeah. 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 We don't. That's we. Mac it's not, it's Mac in addition to Mac Mac Mills. Yeah. Mac and Mills will be um, just like a like there's a you know butterfly park and the the barn will be there and stuff. We've talked about maybe using the barn as like an amphitheater or something like that to have events and stuff like that there. I mean, there's a lot of talking going on right now what we're going to do with it, but. Um, but eventually there will be baseball and softball fields out there at that complex, hopefully to bring people in and, and do things like that. And I don't know if any of you follow traveling baseball or softball, but those are huge events and you can never get enough field space. There are not enough fields in this area for all of the tournaments that happen. And they pay money to rent those fields and things like that. So that's one thing. Um, we talked about doing some other stuff at the city park once we kind of get away from there and don't have to use that for the school and uh, soccer and all of that kind of stuff like we use it now potential of doing things there. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do, but somebody has to spearhead it. Somebody, and maybe it's a group, maybe you get a group of people together who want to work on economic development, you know, or, or things like that, but somebody has to take charge of it and get it together. And then council would work with them um, to make their thoughts and ideas and dreams come to fruition. Yeah, so if you, if you have the ideas that you said to bring over and uh, present yeah. Well, yeah. We, I brought up the comp plan before, and that's going to happen. That's a big part of it. And when we have those meetings, I hope the public will attend and have input in those sessions because that's they're the big drivers of that stuff. So when we have the economic development and the community development parts of that, hopefully people will show up and 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 have influence in that because it's a very it's a bottom up process that depends on people. So historically, the city administrator worked on a lot of economic development and stuff like that. Well, Connie's focus was more on the financials of the city and getting the city back into good financial state. Well, Jeff is going to focus more on the economic development side of things and different things like that because now we're going to have a clerk to do all that financial stuff. So he will be freed up to do some of that other stuff that maybe hasn't gotten as much attention as it needed in the last few years. You had a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. There are two points. First, it seems like you were unhappy that it's taken a man a day to take care of the Macamillo property. Well, what the hell did you expect when you bought it that was just going to sit there and take care of itself? And the second point I want to make is if you're worried about downtown, if we had entrance and exit ramps off of the bypass onto the south of road is what we needed, but it was always my understanding that the city didn't want entrance and exit ramps off the Sutlow Road, which was absolutely insane. Well, you understand wrong that committee yes, that, yeah. on both things. I was not saying that I was upset that it was going to take eight hours to take care of the McNamill property. I'm very happy to have the McNamill property. I want you guys to know that that's not something that just sits over there and nobody maintains it. There is work to be done on that property, and we're doing it. Um, this council has, we had no say in where the exits and entrances off of that came from. None. We, well, actually, you know, we, to that point, we, had, we had many, many meetings on that. And that was a for huge years. deal. For years. Yeah, Sutliff, for years. The Sutliff area, I mean, it was, that's where we wanted it. I mean, that is actually where we wanted it. And we fought pretty hard for it. Yeah. But, but the DOT, it. just, they made the decision, basically, is what happened is the DOT said, it's too close to the one in Mount Vernon. We're not going to do it. So we ended up having to push it out. We had so, to fight with them for months to get yeah. a light out there. I mean, yeah. they don't do what we say. We do what they say, and that's how it goes. Yeah, we don't hard, get a say. It's hard to believe that they didn't want one there because of <laughs> an emergency route. If it's cut, high one's cut off from X140, or that is, to Mount Vernon, they're going to route people out by X140 to switch mm -hmm. way, and then they're going to bring people down so if I were to bring them into Lisbon, and then they got to go one way or the other to go right. to Lisbon to get out. Right. But it, yep. it was atrocious. And I know the, the, that whole process was... Oh, that was that not fun. has been going on for years. When I say yeah. years, I mean like 15, 20 years we've been oh, talking about that long. bypass. About the bypass, yeah. yeah. So and in our input, we tried. In 1969. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. He's really not did. being sarcastic. Not like, oh, that's true. You He's know, not being not sarcastic. Like we didn't try. I mean, we, we tried. I know I sat out in the audience for at least three or four meetings on just that. 
And that's all we talked about. And they, you know, they pushed back and they pushed back and they wanted okay. to do this. They wanted so to do that. So they don't care what we think. Do we own old 30 yet? Are they turning that's what he that's was talking about just, earlier. He, they he, talking they about. gave us an offer on what they would give us to, for Highway 30, give us to, there's projects that have to be done there. So I hope somebody is going to help us bring it back to Shane for Yes. And so they gave us a dollar amount. They gave us the money to do it. They gave us a dollar amount and said, this is what we'll give you to get it back to shape. And we said, no, right. that's that's not what you'll it's give us to cover. give us back to shape because that's not going to cover it. Right. So Dave is our engineer and he's been fighting that out for wow. since December because they literally sent us a letter in December and said, okay, we're done. Now you take it. Yeah. And we were like, right. no, we're not ready to take it. We, that's not enough money. And right. they've been fighting about it ever since December. Yeah. Just to kind of give you an idea of how it is with the DOT. Connie had emailed the DOT asking about a light out there. Because it's dark. When you get off that, it's dark. Their reply was the bypass. On the exit. At Lisbon Boulevard and Old 30. Old 30. Where the bypass comes to Old 30. Yeah. DOT's response was it was not in the plan. It took myself, I think Nate, and Connie to email them again saying it has to happen that was Lincoln. we have to have yeah yes and finally they responded back was we looked at things and we agree they, they agreed they agreed that, to put a light in just like but it at the took top of three Washington, of us when Washington hits Highway Nathan is right we initially emailed the DOT and they told us there was nothing that they could do for us because it was it we needed to go to Lynn County, County. and yep. so that then we started emailing Lynn County and they said well we're not going to do anything for you because we're not in construction season right now so you guys have to wait until next year when we get into construction season well then construction season started and we never heard from anybody so then they started emailing again and then he finally said, I'm sorry it's taking me so long to respond to you, but you're right, it needs a light. No. And if it was in city limits, we would have had it done. It would have been, it would have been, it would have, done. It would have been done right away. But it was in county yeah. and it was not in DOT, so it was fighting them to get it. Honestly, we the won. whole thing's a nightmare. If you it's use that exit, when you're yeah. coming off of the bypass to come down to Lisbon, it's terrible. You you can't cars come flying up there. You can't really see them because it's kind of at a an incline, and it's really hard. There's not really good visibility there. Like, I mean, it's a mess. I heard it's almost like the Springboks where that 151. I would agree. It's horrible. I would agree 100% oh, that it's that's like that. I'm just imagining that we're bringing up here and back there. Which we've complained about that too, but literally they don't care. Right. Yeah. So we are, we, we, we do what we can as far as we can. I mean, that's. I, we had to email the railroad and call them five or six times before that got fixed out there. Yeah. Well, they yeah. well, it's better than it was, and it took us well, six I mean, months to get there. Well, it. You're right. That last bit's terrible. But the siding has still got them, them railroad, wooden railroad ties that they drive on that's missing pieces and stuff. Yeah. For the siding. Then I, 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 I encourage here. you to contact Union Pacific because we did. I, I contacted them and the next day they were out there fixing it. The it road took was us closed. Six we didn't even. But it took us a while to get there. We, right. Mm -hmm. it, we didn't even know that they were closing down the street. I think the they fire department the found city. out before we act, the city found out. So again. Ten minutes. Right, yeah, it was right. within 10 minutes of them closing it down. I'm He's not serious. even kidding. They, so, they notified them 10 minutes before that they were closing it down for like three or four there's days. A lot of, there's a lot of people that, you know, think that we sit up here and we're ridiculous. But if you guys only knew half the things that we, we've we we've dealt with, whatever, it you you have a better, maybe a better understanding. What's that? Right. There's a reason not everybody runs for it. You're right. Right. It's a thankless job. Yes. Yep. Right. But before you sit and complain and bitch and moan about everything that we're doing, you probably should look into what we're doing. There you go, <laughs> <laughs> At least ask a couple questions. Right. That's just like Facebook. Right. Exactly. All right, we got to get going. That was you, mate, Nate. Are you done? I am done. So 8G council reports. Sarah, would you like to start? I, I don't have anything. Just thanks, Brandon, for stepping in. Um, Travis, I'm glad you're back. Not 100%, but you're back. Um, thanks to your staff who's been cleaning up soap suds. 
acceptable. Too bad we couldn't have a spa day or something with it, but, right? Um, I, 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 that's yeah, that's all I have. Okay, Stephanie? Um, I don't really have a lot either, but I will tell you that um, I have been working with Nate a lot lately, and Jeff, and well, everybody, John, all of you guys. Um, but what I want to say about Nate in particular is remember that Nate ran for city council. Nate did not sign on to be mayor of this fine town. He got shoved into that position, um, unfortunately. And he has put, he, he was on vacation, did not get to do anything on his vacation because he spent the entire time dealing with city work. It, he has put a lot of work into this and you guys should appreciate Nate stepping up to do the job that he's doing and I appreciate you stepping up to take on some of that <laughs> responsibility you, and doing those things. Thank you. Because I know you did not sign on for this, so I do appreciate it. What? What is going on? Doug is on a leave of absence, and I think until further notice, I guess is what he said. Until further notice. So Doug will have to decide whether he's going to come back. He was having some health issues. I, I think 90 days-ish. Yeah, he, he said 60 to 90 days, I think. And um, it's, I've, I've heard he's coming back. I've heard he might not. It's, it's a little bit up in the air, but um, until it's a decision that he needs to make, right? Yeah, yeah. Until it hinders us a little bit because Nate is a, the mayor, but he's also a voting member of council. So, like traditionally, when we do like employee interviews and stuff like that, it would be two council members, the mayor and the city administrator. Well, we couldn't do that this year because that would be three council members Great together, support. and you can't have three council right. members together. So, it, it is putting us at like a limited capacity to some of the things that we're doing. But Doug, I think, is doing better. And he needed a little bit of time away, and he got that. And hopefully, he'll come back stronger than ever. And so when he comes back, are you guys getting ready? I am actually I taking a break <laughs> one way or another. There you go. Well, thank you, thank you, Stephanie. Thank yeah. You very much. Um, I've already spoke, so I don't have anything. Travis. Um, the only thing I had was um, I want to see us work on getting out to the bypass and services or and or, and or annexation. Uh, we need to make that a priority. Um, we're in a new budget year, so we need to make it a priority. We need a come and go or a quick start out there. So um, that's my that's my two dollars worth. Have you guys ever gotten any bill board or anything like that? No. Um, we, well, I, I attended the, um, so the DOT had a workshop um, down at Gwen's and I attended it as a council member um, and something that they told us is we can only put billboards up if we have the land. So obviously none of that land is city. <laughs> um, so we would have to look at property owners along that to get permission to put him up. So along so. with that, the, the Lisbon sign that is east of town, uh, when we per, when we did that, the idea was that when the bypass came, we would then move that out. Well, we have to work on getting that moved out now. So now that we have the bypass there, we should be able to move that out, so. You see what it costs for businesses to put their name on that sign out there east of Lisbon? Mm -hmm. That was published in the paper. What was it? A couple thousand dollars to put a little sign up there. Um, the DOT. It's through the DOT. You have to go yeah. through the DOT. But yep. yeah, are you talking about all the signs? That's true. Are They're you talking about the signs that say like food this way or gas yeah. this way? Is that yeah, what you're exactly. talking about? Yeah. There's also stipulations like restaurants. They have to serve um, three meals a day, so they have to serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I mean, there's restrictions for businesses <laughs> to put it out there. Trust me. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I sat in the meeting and listened to, there are a lot of restrictions. And there was, this was actually a, a meeting for business owners that was down at Gwen's. Um, so that's well, kind of how that goes. Well, put it right at What's that? Well, if we put a sign for Lisbon itself. I asked. I asked if we could put a sign in Mount Vernon saying Lisbon next to exits. Because technically, next to exits, you can get to Lisbon. Yeah. I was shut down. 
Because they, here's what they say. They have a sign out there, like if you notice, you'll see a sign that says Martell, so many miles this way, Solon, so many miles that way. The reason that they get those is because they don't have their own exit off of the interstate. We don't get one because technically we have our own exit. So they're not going to put out there that Lisbon's so many miles or, you know, this way or that way. Because we wanted in Mount Vernon to say Lisbon one mile that way or whatever. They won't give it to us because we have our own exit further down. Used to, you're right. So we don't get to have that. I'm done. Yep, that was it for me. John, you got something? Oh, I got a bunch of that. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I, I've been That's around for last. I've gone to these DOT meetings. You would not believe all the rules they have. Uh, it's just mind boggling. If you talk for half an hour, I'm not alone, probably. But we won't go into that. Uh, as far as the alleys um, behind the businesses on Main Street, I've been around, we've revisited and revisited that, and it's mainly the streets that have been built up for the last 125 years, and the buildings at the same level they were built at. And the only thing I can think of when we revisited our engineer about that, and maybe it's from some sort of drains, and we did put in one by the uh, Southeast Lynn that helped them, yeah. and it didn't completely solve everything. It was, if we would have been more foresighted and built that, that building up just a few inches, it would have made a big difference. Uh, as far as the bypass, uh, we had a committee working on that and did a lot of work on it. Uh, the city did have an input, but the DOT was worried about, uh, I don't remember what it was, some environmental thing, wetlands, and some bats that lived out in the area, you would not believe all the things that went into the decision. So it's not just straightforward what you think. Uh, I'd like to mention that uh, Lisbon Library is still operating as usual. If you need a book, you can call them, talk to them, and do a curbside pickup. Southeast Lynn is still providing food to people that uh, need food. They're working on a, another pop-up food pantry or anyone can go get food. If you're interested in that, get southeast and then call between uh, 9 and 4 o'clock Monday through Friday. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, John. All right, uh, moving on to new business, uh, 9A, possible closed session pursuant to code of Iowa section 21.51I to evaluate the professional competency of an individ individual whose appointment, hiring, performance, or discharge is being considered when necessary to prevent needless and irreparable injury to that individual's reputation and that individual requests a closed session. Um, this is Travis Bagley's yearly Bag performance B. review. Bag B, sorry. Yearly performance review is what this item is. Yep, and Travis, would you like to go into a closed session? Sure. All right. Who's review? Travis Bagby. Travis Bagby. He's the head of our maintenance department. We're, do, we're doing more reviews like we should have yearly with uh, the employees. Well, and, and not only that, and but full council. and full council because we had a lot of people leave that were in like um, like Connie for for example is not really doing her her part of this. She would normally do Travis's review. Um, Rick was the chief of police, and he would you know Connie or uh, the mayor would normally do his, and then uh, who's oh and Brandon's as the fire chief. Took care of so Brandon. full council's doing them now. Yep. So I move to go. In Thanks for coming, session. you guys. I All second. Right. We have a motion. We have a second. Stephanie? Thanks for coming, you guys. Aye. Sarah? Aye. John? Aye. Travis? Aye. Nathan? Aye.